I had every intention to make a crit for Summer Camp Island this week, which I'll probably still do at some point, but I decided that there was something much more important to talk about. Welcome to The Critique, where we watch some animated goodies and determine whether we should tune in or tune out. I'm Song, your resident cartoon connoisseur, and this is Milo Murphy's Law. Milo Murphy's Law is a Disney XD program created by Dan Pavenmeyer and Jeff Swampy Marsh, who had both previously created the massively popular Phineas and Ferb. When that show ended, Dan and Swampy decided, We're gonna do it again with Milo Murphy's Law! And thus, Milo Murphy's Law came to be, starting on October 3rd, 2016. It saw positive reception from audiences and has been nominated for two Daytime Emmys and two Annie Awards. Yet for some reason, Disney seems to ignore it everywhere but in Japan, as they have a date for season two, but Disney over here in America has yet to say anything. So here I am to spread awareness for this great show. Am I spoiling the review a bit? Let's find out. I'm just going to come out and say it, any theme song performed by Weird Al Yankovic is an automatic win. I don't care who you are. The intro has Weird Al as Milo singing about how great life is as the world crumbles behind him. It's A-OK -okay though because Milo very clearly does not care, and it's pretty amusing. The contrast between the funky, upbeat music with such optimistic lyrics and the chaotic visuals with everything going up in flames is very interesting and sets up the tone of the show perfectly. The ending credits has snapshots of the episode, which I have to be honest, disappoints me a bit as I prefer the musical number callbacks of Phineas and Ferb, or the extra scenes slash animatics of Gravity Falls and Wander Over Yonder, of their Disney shows. However, it features more Weird Al singing, with alternate lyrics to the theme song It's My World, and I actually prefer it to the opening. Good times all around. Fans of PNF will remember the Phineas and Ferb A plot and the Perry and Doof B plot. Well, Milo Murphy's Law has a similar two plot structure for the most part. Starting with the main premise, Milo Murphy is the great 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 grandson of the original Murphy of Murphy's Law. As such, he, like all the other men of his family, is jinxed. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong and all that. Of course, I wouldn't call him unlucky. The wild adventures that he and his friends, Melissa and Zach, go on, always seem to turn out alright, and Milo's extremely optimistic attitude makes it fun to watch rather than suspenseful. It also helps that he is prepared for any situation thanks to his classic bottomless backpack. Now the B-plot makes this show even more interesting. It follows Cavendish and Dakota, two time travelers tasked with saving the world from a pistachio-less future. At first, this seems simple and silly. But as the B-plot continues to intertwine with the A-plot, it turns into one crazy main plot that feels like it just started with no word on its return. Not that I'm impatient or anything. I touched on this already, but the main character is Milo Murphy, born with a calamity in his wake, but he's always prepared and always makes the most of it. He is joined by his friends, Melissa, straight-A student with an eye for capitalism, and Zach, a former boy band member, who is quite cautious. On the flip side of the story, we have Cavendish and Dakota, quirky time travelers who are kind of failures, but darn it, they try their best and their persistence and hard work is a lot of fun. Now, this show isn't the type that needs a villain, but has one anyway. The problem is it happens late enough that I don't feel comfortable revealing them, so I guess I won't. I will just say that it's crazy and wacky in a way that keeps me way invested. This show looks good. It's vibrant, crisp, and like any good comedic cartoon, movements are fluid and exaggerated. Not to mention, character designs are very distinct from each other, even if not all of them look too great from certain angles. But that's been a thing since the previous series. Of course, I also want to praise the fantastic voice cast comprising of Sabrina Carpenter, Mikai Curtis, and freaking Weird Al Yankovic as main character Milo himself. You also have the returning voices of Dan and Swampy as Dakota and Cavendish respectively, and Vincent Martella as reoccurring character Bradley. Now with the combined forces of Dan, Swampy, and Weird Al, you bet there will be some musical numbers and boy are they great. I honestly believe that these people are lyrical geniuses, and whenever their show breaks into song, 
it's always funny while still fitting the present situation. The numbers do not happen every episode, but they are done often and not once do they ever feel out of nowhere. I spent $17 rooting for the enemy. Overall, Milo Murphy's Law is a grand adventure where anything can happen, and it's fun to see what sort of unexpected messes the gang will get thrown into next. For these reasons, I highly recommend tuning into Milo Murphy's Law. But hey, that's just me. What do you think about the show? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you've made it this far, you might as well subscribe and like if you enjoyed. I'm always up for a discussion, so if you want to chat, my Twitter is active and my Discord is open to all. Now, I'm going to have a fantastic day today, and I hope you do too. Thanks for watching. Justice for Milo.